cleared off the table, leftovers saved. Wash the dishes and put them away. I told you a story, tucked you in tight. At the end of your knockabout day, as the moon sets its sails to carry you to sleep over the midnight sea, I will sing you a song no one ever sang to me. May it keep you in good company. Oh, you can be anybody you want to be. You can love anyone you will. You can travel any country where your heart leads. And know that I will love You can gather friends around You can choose one special one And the only measure of your words and your deeds Will be the love you leave behind when you're gone There are girls who grow up strong and bold there are boys quiet and kind some race on ahead some follow behind some go in their own way in time some women love women some men love men some raise children, some never do. You can dream all the dreams, no one ever reached the end of everything possible for you. You can be anybody you want to be. You can love. Travel any country where your heart leads And know that I love you still You can live by yourself You can gather friends around You can choose one special The love you leave behind when you're gone And the only measure of your words and your deeds Will be the one you leave behind when you're done Good morning. <laughs> Thank you for being here, for joining us today, whether live in person, online, or if you're watching this recording later. You honor us with your presence. You are beloved and you are welcome. No matter where you come from or what you are going through, no matter what you look like or who you love, how much you have or how much you long for, you are welcome. This is the day that we have been given, and we are honored to be together in fellowship. You are welcome here, and more than that, you are cherished. Let us worship together. Please rise, embody your spirit as you are willing and able, and join us in hymn 121 in the gray hymnal, 
we will build a land. few announcements today. Um, some of them are on the back of your order of service. After um, service today, we do have refreshments downstairs. You're welcome to join us. And at 1230, there will be a uh, meeting for those who are interested in discussion and planning of future worship services. Um, and <clears throat> UUIO Bowling Thursdays happen next on Thursday, March 14th at 6 p.m. And there will be a Zen retreat on March 16th. Nope, sorry, March 14th was the bowling. Um, if you're new to us, there are welcome packets on the back table. You're uh, welcome to grab one and read all about us. If you have any questions, please see any of us for answers. And if we don't have the answers, we'll find them for you. And now, Ms. Raley's going to do our chalice lighting.
Good morning. I've been fortunate enough to be raised by strong women. My mother, my grandmother, for a moment my great-grandmother, teachers and bus drivers, my UUIO mentor, and other family friends. Some of these women are gone now, but they live on through me. Even on bad days, I never walk through the world alone because they have all changed me for the better. Sometimes the world feels like a bad place, and sometimes it is. Sometimes we trap ourselves in hells of our own creation. Then sometimes Twitter tells you that the world is on fire and we all hate each other and the end of days is here. We doom scroll and we panic, we get grouchy and afraid. It's so easy to get lost when it feels like your body and mind and the outer world are all fighting against you. And it doesn't help that the weather changes every week. Yet I still keep going because I promised Miss Maggie and Annabelle that I would write books. I promised my mom that I'd do something that makes me happy. I promised my grandmother that I'd be her grandchild that changes the world. And I do. Because of these women, I am thoughtful. I am kind. I am courageous. I am resilient. Even on my worst day, I don't give in. I call my therapist for an emergency session, drink a cherry sparkling water, and take Daisy for a walk. I put my fancy headphones on and put my favorite tunes on repeat, and we go out into the world together, resilient. It makes all the difference. Their love for me allows me to renew my kindness and continue being kind and strong when my cup is empty. Their faith in me allows me to run around changing the world with all the confidence that my kindness makes things better. I can't say I'm healed of all sadness or fear, but I can say that I choose kindness and courage over and over again, and that makes me feel alive. So sometimes the world is a bad place, but sometimes the people in our lives surround us in invisible cloaks of joy and strength. This is how we be the change. We light this chalice in honor of the women who have shaped us to be the change. At this time, I ask that if you are willing and able to rise and greet your neighbor. Nora, Nora, Nora. <laughs> I forgot to tell you it was now. <laughs> so the story that uh, I have for you today is called The Light She Feels Inside, and it's by Gwendolyn Wallace. And the pictures are by Olivia Duchess. See? <laughs> so, 
Some days, Maya feels filled with light. There you go. And then turn it back here. Turn the page. There you go. <laughs> Maya glows when she curls up between her mom and dad at night, and they ask about her day. When she goes next door to borrow two eggs, but Mrs. Wilson gives Maya three eggs, a piece of butterscotch, and a big hug as warm as the sun. When the community garden opens and Maya can pick the sweetest strawberries with John, her favorite cousin. Show me your pictures. Okay. And when she pauses or passes Carrie singing on her way home from school, Maya feels like the glowing in her chest might lift her all the way off the ground. Every day, she watches love dance in the people and places around her. Sometimes, though, Maya feels a different type of glow, a burning one, when Brian pushes her down on the playground and doesn't apologize. when she watches the police talk to John after he takes her to get ice cream. When she sees that the best climbing tree will be torn down so fancy apartments can be put there instead. And when she overhears her mom and dad talk each month about the money they need but don't have, Maya feels very small, but the glowing anger inside her grows bigger. She isn't sure what to do with all this glowing inside her. All she knows is that it's starting to feel too heavy to carry. <clears throat> After school, Maya goes to the library. She used to go to Miss Scott's story time when she was younger. Now she watches from the back of the room. Miss Scott Miss Scott's honeyed voice and gentle eyes always made Maya feel better. When story time is over, Miss Scott comes over to say hello. Maya can feel tears starting to form as she describes everything she's been feeling. Sweetheart, Miss Scott says, that glowing, all of it, is your most important thing. Miss Scott brings her a stack of books. The women who came before you, your ancestors, found lots of ways to honor these same glowing feelings, she said. Maya opens the first book and begins to read. She writes for the newspaper with Ida B. Wells, recording the injustice they see around them. Maya sings with Nina Simone about what freedom might feel like. She plants carrots with Fannie Lou Hamer to feed a whole neighborhood. She creates a poem with Gwendolyn Brooks about all the sights and sounds on her block, helps Marsha P. Johnson fix up the star house, and designs a new neighborhood with June Jordan, one that has parks, clean air, and a home for everyone who needs one. She learns from women who came together to imagine brighter futures, like the Kambahi River Collective who marched on the street to speak about the power in the multicolored lives of black women. When Maya reads that they were inspired by a healthy love for ourselves and our sisters in our community, she knows what that love is. She recognizes her glow. At the kitchen table that night, Maya asks, can you tell me more about the people I come from? She hears about her grandmother, Annie, who made medicines out of plants for people who couldn't go to the doctor, and her great-grandmother, Rose, who taught adults how to read and write in her home at night. Later, Maya draws the women she learned about. She notices that her glowing doesn't feel too much at all. In fact, it fits perfectly inside her, and it whispers to her to share it. The next day, Maya shows her friends her pictures and tells them what she knows about these women. And as she speaks, she notices her friends are starting to glow more brightly, too. 
flowing together, the friends ask each other the questions in their hearts. What makes you feel safe? How do we take care of one another? Why doesn't everyone have everything they need? Where should we start? And so they sit together and imagine endless ways to lift up what they love about the world and even more ways to change what they don't. They look around at all the glowing women they know, Miss Scott, Mrs. Wilson, their teachers, the women who volunteer at the community garden, their parents, and they set out to find all the glowing women they don't know yet. Sometimes they feel happy, and sometimes they feel sad, and sometimes they feel tired because it seems like there's so much that needs to change about the world, but they know they do not glow alone. The end. And now we're going to read the covenant together. It is in your order of service. Love is the spirit of this church and service its law. This is our great covenant to dwell together in peace, to seek the truth in love, and to help one another. And now if you, we will sing. Are you going to go to class? You're going to stay here? We're not going to sing. Uh, we're not going to sing her out to class because she's the only child here, right? Any more kids here? Okay, she wants to stay in the service, so we're going to stay in the service today. Good morning. <laughs> um, every week in our church, we take up an offering. It's good to remind ourselves from time to time that the offering is symbolic as well as practical. We know that it is through pledges that we build our budget and fund our yearly programs and ministries of worship and religious education, pay our staff and professional religious leaders, and finance the comfort and beauty of our buildings. And we know that we could easily submit those pledge checks to the church at any convenient time. But we pass the plate during our worship service to make a community expression of thanks for the blessing of abundance, to visibly bring in the harvest at this most cherished hour of our week. Our offering says that the act of giving is as essential to our spiritual well-being as anything else we do here on Sunday mornings. This week, our offering goes to the Minister's Discretionary Fund. The Minister's Discretionary Fund exists so that the Minister can respond to requests for financial assistance from individuals, families, or groups in need, both within and without the congregation. It is also, at times, used for the purpose of supporting UUYO's ministry. If you wish to make an offering to support the Minister's Discretionary Fund, please indicate this on your check or envelope. Thank you for your generous spirit. We will now receive the offering that supports the life of Youngstown, the Mahoning Valley, and our wider world. I listen to the wind, to the wind of my soul. I sat upon the setting sun, but never, 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 I never wanted water once, no, never, never, never. I let my music take me where my heart wants to go. I sat upon the devil's lake. Never, 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 never. I'll never make the same mistake. No, never, never, never.
Today we're going to do a guided meditation. And I neglected to write down who wrote it, so I'm very sorry. It is on the UUA's website, though. So if you are so inclined, you can look that up. Feel the gravity of the earth holding you in place. Wiggle your toes as if they were roots. Roots connect you to the earth, lending you strength. Gently sway in the wind, turning your body like the trunk of a tree, leaning this way and that, bending as the air pushes and pulls. What surrounds you may sway you. May you bend and feel unbalanced. Wiggle your toes. Know that your roots can hold you as you learn and grow. A tree is nourished by the soil and water. You are nourished by the food the earth grows and the water it provides. You are cared for and loved by many people. Breathe deeply. Still yourself. Know that your roots are strong. Wiggle your roots. Today's reading is a poem by early 20th century Unitarian minister, William Lawrence Sullivan. Its title is, To Outgrow the Past. To outgrow the past, but not extinguish it. To be progressive, but not raw. Free, but not mad. Critical, but not sterile. Expectant, but not deluded. To be scientific, but not to live on formulas that cut us off from life. To hear amidst clamor the pure, deep tones of the spirit. To seek the wisdom that liberates and the loyalty that consecrates. To turn both prosperity and adversity into servants of character. To master circumstances by the power of principle and to conquer death by the splendor of loving trust. This is to attain peace. This is to pass from drear servitude to divine adoption. This is to invest the lowliest life with magnificence and to prepare it for coronation. The song I chose for special music this morning um, was written by Carrie Newcomer. I've done several of her songs here in the past. Um, she is a, a very interesting uh, songwriter. Uh, she works very often with the likes of Emmy Lou Harris, has toured with her. Um, she has a really interesting voice and a really outlook, interesting outlook on life. And many of her songs are from a woman's perspective. and. Uh, I thought this morning, uh, although I am not a woman, I will attempt to channel my inner diva to, to, the, to the best of my ability here. So, yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's exactly right. Just, you all just think good diva thoughts for me here, all right? But it's a lovely song. It's called You Can Do This Hard Thing. table with my head in my hands a column of numbers I just could not understand you said add these together carry the two now you you can do this hard thing you can do this hard thing It's not easy, I know But I believe that it's so You can do this hard thing The 
at a cold winter station breathing in to our gloves this would change me forever leaving for god knows what you carried my bags you said i'll wait for you you can do this hard thing do this hard thing it isn't easy I know but I believe that it's so you can do this hard thing late at night I called you and you answered the phone the worst it had happened and I did not want to be alone you quietly listen you said we'll see this through you can do this hard thing you can do this hard thing it's not easy I know but I believe that it's so you can do this hard thing And breathless and pressed in hard times Hearts hung like laundry on backyard clotheslines Impossible just takes a little more time From the muddy ground Comes a green volunteer place we thought barren new life appears morning will come whistling some comforting tune for you you can do this hard thing you can do this hard thing it's not easy, I know, but I believe that it's so. You can do this hard thing. You can do this hard thing. It isn't easy, I know, but I believe that it's so. You can do this hard thing. interview by Jeff. I love butterflies. There's butterflies on your order of service. I love them all. All the shapes and sizes and colors. My favorite are the blue, of course, but I love them all. I love how they are living fairies who have brightened the earth for millions of years. How it tickles when they grace you enough to land gently, briefly on your bare skin and how they are considered good luck. I love them and I am in awe by the miracle of transformation that they undergo. From an egg to a caterpillar to a cocoon to a butterfly. They are so fragile so vulnerable and yet so magical and inspiring as they completely change themselves to become what the world needs them to be. There's an often paraphrased quote that says, be the change you wish to see in the world. It has been attributed to Gandhi, but what Gandhi actually said was, we must live the changes we want to see in the world. Slight difference. Essentially, before you can attempt to change the world, you have to change yourself. We all look at the world and see what we would like to be different. It is not difficult to find the faults. From the small personal problems like losing weight, 
getting a better car, finding a different job, finding or keeping love, local to local issues, funding schools, supporting small businesses, lowering crime, helping our neighbors. On the national level, racism, discrimination, politics, politics, politics. All the way to the global level, war, famine, disease. There are no shortages of problems near or far, personal or universal. The question I am asking is how can we change to help be part of the solution? We are all changing all the time in different ways, at different rates, for better or for worse. What if we worked a little harder to change ourselves to help make the world better? In becoming our best selves, what good can we bring to those around us and to the wider world? This past Friday was International Women's Day, hence the diva. I would be remiss if I did not talk about some of the women who changed themselves and changed the world. Some of the women who are currently changing the world. So many incredible women have looked at the world, sought out the wisdom, and decided to become part of the solution instead of dwelling on the problems. When they could not change everything, they changed themselves, transforming into what they needed to be to see in the world, what others needed to see in order to change themselves. They have redefined roles and led revolutions. They spread their wings, and they taught us how to fly. There are so many famous and infamous women who have revolutionized art, science, culture, civil rights, and on and on. And there are millions who have changed the world in small, quiet ways that few realize or acknowledge. There are too many amazing women to name all of them or even a fraction, but some of the transformative heroes that have touched and inspired me include Eleanor Roosevelt, Maya Angelou, Susan B. Anthony, Jane Austen, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, Rosa Parks, Tammy Duckworth, Kamala Harris, Nellie Bly, and my friend Harper, who was born in a body that could not contain her. She metamorphosed, metamorphed into a beautiful butterfly, leaving the cocoon that was Johnny behind. We can all transform in some way grow and change to be better. Even the smallest changes, when made with great love, can change the world entirely. It's called the butterfly effect. We can choose to smile at strangers and pay them sincere compliments, to donate to worthy causes or start a nonprofit to make the world a better place. We can educate ourselves about things we may have previously avoided. We can volunteer for a cause that we never thought about before, but no. It has intrinsic worth. We can protest injustice and march for peace. We can run for political office and actively work for change from the inside. There are so many ways we can change ourselves and in doing so change the world. How will you make that change? How will you outgrow the past in your former self? How will you transform, spread your wings and fly? This is the formation prayer, and I do have the author on this one, George Grimwell. George Grim Howell. Spirit of the earth, Gaia, mother, we call on you. In your womb we are formed, formed and reformed, shaped and reshaped. In the great cauldron of geological time, unknown and unknowable. May we, in this tender moment, whisper a word of gratitude that creation did not end on the sixth day, but joyously rolls on age after age. Across the centuries, the years, the days, continuing to grow. Continuing now in this very moment, inside our forming and transforming hearts. To live is to change. To change is to find our sacred purpose. Father time, teach us to love our layers the deposits of bygone seas of joy and sorrow that have built up the foundations of who we are. Mother of creation, teach us to be fearless, 
as we are cast into the fires that melt and mold and harden us during times of upheaval and injustice. Spirit of the earth, teach us to trust the transformation, to hang on tight as we suffer the pressure and the heat, as our souls deep in the darkness await the metamorphosis, that day when finally we emerge from the womb of life transformed, our dusty limestone turned to luscious, lustrous marble. May our transfigured hearts be hewn into tools that give life or works of art that inspire, or maybe a smooth, flat stone flung from a child's hand that skips on water for one sparkling moment. And when change comes again, may we be content to let the ocean waves of time gently release us as humble grains of sand to caress the toes of curious beachcombers. Let our lives be formed and reformed and transformed again for love and for justice, for we know that this is holy. Amen and blessed be. Please join us in our closing Hymn number 346, Come Sing. We extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we keep in our hearts until we meet again. As we depart, remember the one true fact. You are loved and never truly alone. 
can't explain it Couldn't if I tried How the only things we carry Are the things we hold inside Like a day out in the open Like a love we won't forget Like the laughter that we started And it hasn't died down yet Let it go, my love, my truest Let it sail on silver wings Life's a twinkling, that's for certain, but it's such a fine thing. There's a gathering of spirits, there's a festival of friends, and we'll take off where we left off when we all 